Well, good morning. A couple of uh, housekeeping things as we get started this morning. Uh, number one, my, uh, my wife was kind uh, not to give you the full truth. Uh, while it's really great that we concentrate on one package and really focus on that, uh, there is certainly an element that my obsessive compulsive disorder uh, really has to do with the fact of why we can't have multiple packages opened all the time and all over the place. So uh, that was very nice of her not to mention that, but uh, I, I thought that, it, that we would have complete disclosure this morning. Secondly, I, I, I've got to let you know that I, I started panicking a little bit this morning on my way here. And you'll understand as we get into the sermon, because we're new to Inman uh, and, and really enjoying our time here, but as we were driving over, as I was driving over this morning, that, that long drive from Inman Mills all the way to here, uh, fortunately we didn't hit traffic, um, but as I was driving over here this morning, I, I started realizing I've never been here the Sunday after Christmas. And I was like, I don't know if the Christmas decorations are still up. I don't know if everything's already put away. Uh, and that'll make, again, that'll make more sense here in, in a few minutes uh, because I have started worrying that I was going to insult the entire church. Probably still going to insult a portion of the church, but was concerned that I was about to insult the entire church and would be looking for a new church again. So uh, the, the third thing that I say to you this morning is that I don't want you to panic. This is a hymnal, uh, and, and it's always a dangerous thing when the preacher, amen, amen, and amen again. Uh, it's always a dangerous thing when a preacher brings, brings a hymnal with them. I promise I won't sing. And all of God's people said amen. And lastly, if nothing else happens this morning, if, if nothing else, if no other amazing thing happens from this service, I want it duly noted that me preaching this morning has Jim Ayers on the third row from the front. <clears throat> we can report to Dr. Moore that miracles do still happen. So a couple stats as we get started this morning. I, I'm a kind of a statistics kind of person. I like facts and figures. I like uh, little things. Um, Jeremiah may mention to one of these, thank you for stealing my first point in my sermon. Today is the fifth day of Christmas. Christmas is not over. Christmas, traditionally, Christmas is celebrated from Christmas Day to January 6th. Those are the, those are the 12 days of Christmas. This is the fifth day. If you've had those five golden rings and you weren't sure what to do with them, today is your day. Uh, this is the day that you want to give those out. So we are in the beginning of the Christmas season. I was reading a thing online that said that in many European countries, they have now developed a, a time that for the 40 days following Epiphany, which is January 6th, they celebrate the Christmas season all the way up for the next 40 days. And so we are just starting into the Christmas season. The second statistic that I share with you is today is the eighth day of winter. That means that there are 82 more days of winter, 12 weeks until spring gets here. Now, why would I share these statistics with you? Well, it could be. Perhaps it's that I'm a winter lover, which I am, and I'm just wanting to keep all of you summer people in your place, which I am. Perhaps it is that I am a, just have a plethora of useless information and feel compelled to share it with you. Also true. But maybe this morning, maybe there's a different reason. Maybe there's another reason why I share these things with you. See, I think that those statistics and other things that we're going to look at, 
they speak to a condition that many of us find ourselves in. Maybe you find yourself in that condition this morning. And it is this, that our personal choices and the actions of others can bring hurry onto our lives. Let me say that again, because that was better than you heard. Our personal choices and the actions of others can bring hurry to our lives. We allow our lives to become so hurried that we never stop to reflect, to think, to observe. Maybe that's where you are this morning. Maybe either the the choices that you have made have brought this sense of hurry to your life. Maybe even though we are less than than five days removed from the celebration of Christmas, maybe the magic of Christmas Day is completely lost on you. And you find yourself rushing to what is next. Maybe it's not your choice. Maybe it's the actions of others. Maybe it's the circumstances that you find yourself in that are causing hurry to come to your life. I was in Target a few days ago, uh, right before Christmas. Uh, yes, ladies, be impressed. Some men go to Jared. I go to Target. So she's lucky, isn't she? But I was in Target. It was a few days before Christmas. I was picking up a, la- a few last-minute things. And while I was there, there were two employees that were frantically working, setting out the Valentine's Day and the St. Patrick's Day displays. Now, I believe myself to be a a witty person, so I went up to them and asked them where the Easter baskets were. You found it funnier than they did. (laughs) They were not amused by it. But but do do you get that? Do you see that all around us, this this sense that we've got to so quickly move to the next thing, to the next thing, to the next thing? Maybe you are that person. Maybe maybe three days into winter, you're talking about spring, and and then two days into spring, you're talking about summer, and as soon as you get into summer, you're talking about fall. Or maybe it's not really based on your calendar. Maybe it's based on things in your life. Maybe you're a high school student talking about how great it's going to be to be in college. Maybe you're a college student talking about how great it's going to be to go work. (laughs) Notice all of us laughing. (laughs) Maybe, Maybe you're living your life and it's just that looking to what is next and what is next and what is next and never being where you are. We're hurried. We're rushed. Matthew chapter 2, immediately before the passage that Lori read to us, there's the story of the wise men. Now, again, this isn't in my notes, but I feel compelled to let you know. There is absolutely no guarantee. There's nothing that tells us that there were three wise men. There are, three, there are wise men. There are three gifts. It might be assumed that a man is only a, a, able to come up with one good gift, so there had to be three. But we don't know how many wise men, though. We know that there were wise men. We don't know when they came. We we know that it wasn't immediately at the birth of Christ. There was a period of time after the birth of Christ before the wise men showed up. Could have been a year. Could have been up to two years. But the wise men show up, and here is Mary and Joseph and the baby Jesus living life in Jerusalem. Hear these words, verses 9 through 11. After hearing the king, they went their way, and the star which they had seen in the east went on before them until it came and stood over the place where the child was. 
When they saw the star, they rejoiced exceedingly with great joy. And after coming to the house, they saw the child with Mary, his mother, and they fell to the ground and they worshiped him. Then opening their treasures, they presented to him gifts of gold and frankincense and myrrh. Can you imagine that scene? What we know of Mary and Joseph is that Mary and Joseph were not wealthy people. What we know of Mary and Joseph is that Mary and Joseph were not from Bethlehem. This is not their hometown. They had, they had come there because of the census. They, they didn't return to Nazareth. And there's multiple reasons why maybe they didn't return immediately to Nazareth. One was that while Joseph believed the angel and while Mary believed the angel, there's no guarantee that Nazareth believed the angel. It would have been a very difficult situation for Joseph and for Mary to go back to. And so now they find themselves in Bethlehem. And here they are with the small child in Bethlehem, trying to, trying to adjust to life there, trying, trying to, to, to get accustomed to what it means to be in Bethlehem, finding out where the good market is getting involved in their small group at the synagogue. Just living life. And for the second time, for the second time in Jesus' short life, something miraculous happens. Now the birth is miraculous. The, the birth of Jesus and the and the, the, the star, and the shepherds, and we'll get to them here in a minute. And this is an incredible encounter. But everything kind of gives us the sense that after that, life just was life. They're just kind of going along and raising Jesus. And then the star reappears. And here in their humble abode, here in their humble surroundings, here in, in this little house that, that, is, that is probably connected to a family member or someone that they've developed a relationship, here now come these kings, these foreign dignitaries, these, these, uh, these miraculously uh, dressed, immaculately dressed, put together a caravan of people floating into their side of town where these people didn't come to this side of town. And they come into the presence of Mary and they worship. They worship the baby Jesus. And they bring gifts. And these gifts are significant, and that's the point of the hymnal that we'll get to in a minute. Now, for a poor family... For a poor family, they had never received gifts like this before. Gifts of gold and frankincense and of myrrh. But you know, there's a little bit more to it than just that. If we, in, there's a hymn, We Three Kings. You got it going through your head right now, don't you? I want, to, I want to read some of the, the portions of this that talks about the three gifts because the three gifts are significant because the three gifts are not only of great value, they speak to who Jesus is. Born a king on Bethlehem's plain, gold I bring to crown him again. King forever, ceasing never over us all to reign. The gift of gold, the gift of a king. Frankincense to offer have I, incense owns a deity nigh, prayer and praising all men raising, worship him, God on high. Frankincense, the gift to a God. Myrrh is mine, its bitter perfume, breeze of life, of gathering gloom, sorrowing, sighing, bleeding, dying, sealed in the stone-cold tomb. 
the gift of myrrh, the gift of sacrifice, the gift of burial. Three gifts that speak to the person of Jesus. Glorious now, behold him arise, King and God and sacrifice. For Mary and for Joseph, that's a pretty amazing day. That, that's the type of day that you just want to bask in and sit and reflect. These gifts, these kings, this star, what does this mean? What does this mean? What is this telling us of this person of Jesus? What is it calling us to? But you heard it in the passage that Lori read. So they present their gifts, they worship him, they lay the gifts there. They're warned in a dream not to return to Herod because Herod had plans that Lori wrote, read to us. They go home another way. Verse 13, now when they had gone, behold, an angel of the Lord appeared to Joseph in a dream and said, get up, take the child and his mother and flee to Egypt and remain there until I tell you, for Herod is going to search for the child to destroy him. So Joseph got up and took the child and his mother while it was still night and left for Egypt. That beautiful, incredible, amazing scene. And now hurry has been pushed into their lives. Gifts of gold and frankincense and myrrh followed immediately by get your stuff and go. And not just go, but go to another place where you know no one, where you don't speak the language, where you are not from, that these are not your people. Get up and hurry and go. Can you imagine that scene? It's been a while, but I remember what it's like traveling with an infant. Do you remember that? Do you remember what it's like before? Before Katie was born, Lori and I would decide that we wanted to go somewhere, and you just kind of get a bag, and you pack a bag, and you throw it in, and you go, right? That's about how long it took. And then the child was born. She'll get me back for that. Do you remember what that was like? And it takes a U-Haul truck all of a sudden. And it's just like, we're only going, but now it's it's pack and plays and cribs and and it's just like stuff just keeps coming and coming and traveling is so incredibly difficult can you imagine what it was for joseph and for mary here they are and now it's mary get up baby i'm sorry get the baby up grab everything that we can carry put it in a bag tie the bag off, put it on the donkey, we got to get out of here. And hurry is on their life. And where they had wanted to sit there and wait and rest, there was now rush. I confess to you this morning that a lot of the hurry in my life I bring on myself. If you're honest this morning, for a lot of us, the hurry that we experience, we bring on ourselves. But the question this morning, whether, it, whether it's something that we, that we do to ourselves or whether it's something that, that circumstances in life has done to us, is how do we address hurry? How do we deal with it? Are there things that we might do differently? You know, I think that there is a key... And it's in an earlier passage when, when the shepherds, when the shepherds came and visited Mary, 
found in Luke chapter 2 or in the Peanuts Christmas special, whichever you prefer. But in Luke chapter 2, the, the shepherds visit Mary, and, and there's the shepherds, and, and they, they hear the great sound. Let me just read it for you, just to remind us of this incredible story. In the same region, there were some shepherds staying out in the fields and keeping watch over their flocks by night. And an angel of the Lord suddenly stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terribly afraid. But the angel said, do not be afraid, for behold, I bring you good news of great joy, which will be for all people. For today in the city of David, there has been born to you a Savior who is Christ the Lord. Now this will be a sign for you. You will find a baby wrapped in clothes and lying in a manger. And suddenly there appeared with the angel a multitude of heavenly hosts praising God, saying glory to God in the highest on peace on earth among men with whom he is well pleased. When the angels had gone away from them into heaven, the shepherds began to say to another, let us go straight to Bethlehem then and see this thing which happened, which the Lord has made known to us. So they came in a hurry and found their way to Mary and Joseph and the baby as he lay in the manger. When they had seen this, they made known the statement which had been told them from about the child. And all who heard it wondered at the things which were being told by the shepherds. But Mary treasured these things, pondering them in their heart. And the shepherds went back, glorifying God for all that they had seen. Did you notice Mary's response? It says that Mary treasured them and pondered them in her heart. For our last few minutes together, I'd like for us to consider a word maybe not normal to our vernacular. Ponder. Ponder is defined by Webster as to weigh in the mind quietly, soberly, deeply. Perhaps that's how we counter hurry. To ponder. As we prepare to move into a new year and into a new decade, what if we slowed ourselves down to ponder, to ponder what God has done in and through our lives, to ponder what God has planned in and through our lives moving forward, to simply ponder who God is. I know that substitute teachers are not normally supposed to give out homework but I'm going to be an exception. So yes, I have a homework assignment for you. It will not be graded on a curve. But here's what I want you to do. This week, this week I want you to put down the phone. I want you to put down the remote. I want you to put down the controller. I want you to close the computer up. Sometime this week, I want you to pour yourself a good cup of tea or a good cup of coffee. I want you to sit in a quiet place and I want you to ponder. Or perhaps take a walk. leaving all the distractions behind, take a walk, and in quiet and in solitude, ponder. I can guarantee you that the hurry will wait. Each of us, each of us needs to slow down and hear from God. As for me, as I go into this new year, I've already kind of been working through something that I will be pondering these three seemingly simple commands from a passage in Micah 
Out of Micah 6, 8, it says to do justice, to love mercy, to walk humbly with our God. Now, you don't know me well. If you did, you would know that personally I'm okay with doing justice. I struggle to show and to love mercy, and I am consistently challenged to be humble within God's presence. But as we go into this new year, as we go into this new decade, beyond any silly silly resolutions that I know that I'll break by the weekend and that have no eternal significance. What if God's people, what if we, each of us individually and all of us collectively, what if we resolved to do justice, to love mercy, walk humbly with our God. Something to ponder. Let's pray together. Gracious God, your word speaks to us, gives us strength, gives us direction. God, we come to you this morning and we confess to you that too often we allow our lives to be hurried, we allow our lives to be rushed, we question and wonder where you are, God, and you are there quietly and stilly speaking to us. If we'll just slow ourselves down to listen. God, my prayer for myself and for each person here this morning is that we would hear from you, that we would reflect, God, on what you are doing and what you continue to do. And that we would live lives, God, that bring you honor and glory and praise. Help us to slow down, God that we might hear your voice. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. We're going to have a song of of response, uh, an opportunity for you to respond to what God has said to you this morning. Uh, I'm going to ask Jeremiah, if you will, to come here and stand at the front. If there's a decision that you need to make, if if, if you have been wondering and thinking about finding a church home, And maybe this is the day, this is the day that that God has called you to come and unite your life here and to be part of First Baptist of Inman uh, and to collectively work with this group and see in the direction that God is taking us. Then I'd ask you to come. Maybe you're here this morning and you know that God has, has put a calling upon your life. Come and talk to Jeremy. Come and share with him. Let him know what God is doing. As we sing together, You respond as God leads. Let's stand together.